spirit and in truth. I thank you because that you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, you are the God of gods. Lord, you have no rival. You have no equal. You are God. You're God Almighty, and I love you. I worship you. You're the God of our of our hearts, our lives, our souls, and you're the one that comforts. I'm asking you today, Lord, to touch the families that need that touch. God, I'm asking you to heal those, Lord, that need healing today. That strength will be given. Father, move in this service today that everything that is said and done will bring honor and glory unto the Lord Jesus Christ. In the holy name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Page six we're going to start with today. I want to know more about my Lord.
that's the reason why the devil wants to rob your joy. He wants to take away your strength. But thank God it can be joy unspeakable. You just don't know how to describe it. Words cannot tell you. That's how you feel. When the presence of God is upon you so real. Hallelujah. It's such a good honor to have all of you with us today to worship the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand. I know some of you have just seated, but if you'll stand, I want us to pray our prayer of declaration. We're going to thank God not only for what He has done, but we're going to praise Him for what He is going to do. You know, faith is believing God for things before it happens. Oh, yes. Right? That is faith. So I want you to pray this out loud. I want it to come from your heart today. Lord, upon the authority of your word, I boldly confess that I am a believer and I thank you for fulfilling your promises to me. I thank you for the salvation of my entire family, those who are saved and those who will be saved. I thank you for revealing yourself to them. I thank you for filling them with the Holy Ghost and fire. I thank you for perfect health and healing in my life and for my family. I thank you that we walk in divine favor and blessings. I am a tither and a giver. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. I thank you for my job and a better job, and for raises, bonus sales and commissions, interest and income, debts paid off, gifts and surprises. I am blessed going in and going out. Hallelujah. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Praise God. We just remain standing. Our us for coming to receive the morning tithe and offering. And I want us to pray and ask God's blessings upon this offering today as they are coming. Uh, I shared with the church the other night that on August 11th, we're going to be receiving a, a special offering for um, Angela Powell's. Angela was a girl who was working on re-roofing the church and she fell off the back and uh, she really messed up her ankle. She's been through two surgeries and at first, you know, they were saying, no, 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 we've got all of this, but they did not realize that the medical bills were going to accumulate like they have. And uh, we've already sent an offering to them. They have been so thankful. They've not been threatening to sue the church. I don't think they would ever do that. But yet I do feel a sense of responsibility knowing that she was working here at the church whenever that happened. Yes. And for those of you that would say, let the insurance handle it, the insurance will not handle it. It was through that that we found out that if you volunteer to work at the church, you're not covered up underneath liability. Mm -hmm. But if you just attend the church, you're covered. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank God that we've got a lot of workers in the church that's not worried about liability. <laughs> Amen? So I just want you to make that a point. Uh, to pray about, and also, I'm just giving you some information this morning to help us pray. We, we're talking about trying to find out what all is going on in the plumbing of the church. For $3,000, we can find out the reason why. All of the plumbing in the foyer, and also the one back here where the, the office has been flooded twice, uh, there, there's just a lot to it. And uh, so I ask you to help us to be praying for that. Uh, let God speak to your heart. This is God's church. I'm not going to worry about it. And it may be that some of you have been saying, well, I've just been waiting for God to speak to me concerning things, and this may be one of those times. So will you give as giving unto the Lord this morning? Brother Simmons, will you pray for us? Father God, we love you. We thank you for your grace, your love, and mercy. And God, I ask you this morning for everyone that's here, God, that you would bless through the Spirit of God. God, lead us directed in your path, God. God, let us live unto you, God, I pray. God bless the offering. Use us your glory and honor. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
you. Thank God for His goodness, His great love and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements here. Prayer is needed for all that is going to PYFC this week. I ask you to be praying for them. Also, on Friday, August the 2nd, we're having a back-to-school bash, and we're needing school supplies. Sister Diane has a list of supplies that the kids need. She's going online. She's got it all figured out from the, the schools that's required, different things. Uh, so if you'll get with her, and if we can all work together on this, God has blessed us in the past word that a lot of our kids have, have had what they needed to go back to school, and it's not been such a burden upon a lot of the parents. And uh, also on Monday, August the 12th, we're going to be having You're Not Alone. And once again, we'd like to invite anyone out. Uh, if you're having to deal with people, maybe children, or um, it don't even have to be a child. Uh, people with addictions, people with anger issues. It's just a support group where that we want you to know that you're not alone. And uh, I, I know that God is helping. And those who are dealing with us, they need God to help them all the time. So, uh, Brother Ed, Sister Chris, this is our young at heart. Amen. Amen. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hi, good morning. We are happy to see you guys, and we wanted to just remind you that next Saturday is our TNT event, and uh, we want you to come out and be with us and fellowship, and let's have some food and fun together. We're going to start at 11 and go until about 1. Yeah, and you want to make sure you bring a covered dish, which we have a sign-up sheet back in the foyer, to sign up what you're going to bring. We're not setting any kind of a menu, so we know that everyone, our seniors really show up and show out in this part of it. So get ready, and of course there'll be some good giveaways and some fun things going on. And uh, it's at 11 a.m. just this next Saturday. It's right here at us. And it's kind of a red, white, and blue event. So if you want to wear something patriotic, that would be great. It, it's a little bit beyond 4th of July, but this is going to be our uh, 4th of July kind of event. So please come out, bring a friend, and be here next Saturday, the 27th at 11 a.m. Bless you guys. Stand and worship with us. We worship you as a 
shout of praise. He is the last. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, He is found to be our Creator. And I tell you what, in the book of Revelation, you're going to find Him to be the reigning King of glory. And I, I tell you, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that, to that wonderful, wonderful time. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to have all of you with us today. I'm going to ask you to go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. We're going to look at verses 14 through 16. As you're standing and preparing to read the Word of God with me today, so good to have Brother and Sister Griffin with us this morning. And he is going to be ministering tonight in the service, so come on back out. I know that God's given him a word to share, and it's going to touch your heart, touch your life. And uh, I just want you to pray that God will move in the service tonight. And uh, it was so good to see Bob and Jane and Leslie yes. walk in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God for them. Thank God for his healing power yeah. and his keeping power. Yeah. Well, I want to take you into the Word of God this morning. And I just feel like that, that God is going to challenge maybe not everybody. There may be someone here today or several people here today that God is going to challenge through this message. I want to preach to you about sold out. Yeah. I'm not talking about selling out and living for God. Right. Right. I'm talking about how people have sold out. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. What are they given in exchange for their soul? Come on. Right. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 14, said that one of the twelve, called Judas Esker, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give? Me. Oh, yes. And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Yes. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Yeah. <laughs> 30 pieces of silver he sold out. Right. But I wonder today how many people are selling for far less. Come on. Father, I ask you for the anointing today. Yes. I cannot do this without you. God, I am praying the Holy Ghost of heaven will come down upon us to touch us. God, we've got to have the touch of the Master strong hand. And I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint this morning. God, anoint the messenger, anoint the word. Challenging our hearts, oh God, taking a close look at ourselves. Father, for we, we want to be sold out unto you, dear God. My Lord in heaven, I just ask for the anointing of God today to yes. flow afresh. Yes. Lord Jesus, for we're nothing but flesh and bone. And God, you are the freshness yes. of the Spirit. And we need that today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's not any man in all of history has ever had a greater opportunity to be successful and to be happy than Judas had. Right. But since his death, Judas has been ranked to be one of the top among those who are hated yes. and detested <laughs> among people today. No. The scriptures, where his name is found, the writers express their reports to his name. Yeah. Matthew and Mark described him as Judas Esker, who also betrayed the Lord. That's right. Luke, he called him a traitor. Yeah. John, that beloved, labeled him as a thief. And even Jesus, that sweet, tender man of Galilee, he looked and said it had been good for that man if he had never been born. Never been born. Right. That's good. Now, I think about Judas and how that today that we can look at him and discuss what it might have been if he had done something different. Because the picture of Judas is a 
typical picture of literally thousands of people of our day that we live in today, not just 2,000 years ago, but even this day. Right. Judas was honored to have his name included with the 12. Can you imagine that prestige? Can you imagine how that would make you feel to know that you were one of the 12 chosen, one of the 12 selected? Right. And had he not sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver, he could have had his name inscribed like Peter and James and John and Andrew Come on. up there in glory along with the foundations of that city of God. But because of what he did, he is not known to be a notable man, but instead people despise him. Many despise the name of Judas. Right. I want to look, I want you to look with me at something first of all. The, the meaning of Judas is not always meant what we would describe it to be today. In fact, the name Judas, it means the praise of God or the confessor of God. Whenever he was born, his parents looked at him with such high hope and just believed that the best is going to be for my son. That's right. Here is going to be one that's going to glorify God. But even though he was named to be the one to praise God, he was the one. He was the one to make that choice. Come on. That he would not be known as the one to lead people in worship, but rather he would be known as the son of perdition. And he would go on to commit suicide. Right. He would, be, he would go on to cause the potter's field to be purchased with his blood money. You see, Judas, he might have been like the apostle Peter where he could have walked down the street and just the shadow of him passing over Come on. would have healed people. He could have been like John the Revelator where that God revealed things so deeply to him and, and revealed what would come to pass in the end. But Judas was the one to make his choice and to make his decision. Yes, Instead was. of all of those things, uh, he has now a life that casts a shadow of reproach and and people don't want to walk like him. So they say. In the days of Judas Iscariot. The name of Judas was one of the most popular names. But it's not very popular today. No. And especially among those who are Christians. Right. If you are a Christian parent. You are a Christian whenever that child was born. And if it was a son. I did not even have Judas come across my name list. Whenever I knew that Dustin was there. I wasn't thinking about calling him Judas. Uh, who would ever want to call their son a traitor? One who sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Yes. No, but I'm telling you today, uh, people just almost despise uh, his name. In fact, one of the one of the points wrote and said of all the works of tongue and pen, the saddest of these, it might have been whenever he referred back to Judas. And I want you to understand like Judas, every one of us here this morning, we are acting upon our own will. Yes, right. Come on. We are acting upon our own will. Judas was not compelled to sin. Whenever he was born, he was not destined to be lost. He acted entirely of his own will. Think about this in Acts 1 and 25, where that the writer said Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. Right. What is he talking about? He's the one to, that chose where he would go. He's the one who chose hell over heaven. I want you to remember this morning that no one is born to be lost. It's God's will for all men, women, boys, and girls to be saved. Right. It's yeah. God's will for all humanity to come to the knowledge of truth. But even in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it said it's not his will that any man should perish, but all should come to repentance. And then Paul writes again in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, and said, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord and Jesus Christ. Yes. If a person dies without God, it is to their own choosing. God did not allow you to be conceived in your mother's womb, nor come into this 
world with a desire for you to miss heaven. It was his desire for every one of us to be born again and live with him throughout all the eternal ages. God does not want any of us to go into eternity alone. That's right. But as Judas was held accountable for his sin, so will you and I. Yes. We will be held accountable. And Judas is just like a lot of people are today. We've had our opportunities. He had close, he had a constant fellowship with the Lord. He had, he had even been ordained of the Lord to heal the sick and to cast out devils. That's right. Think about this. I'm, I'm telling you, he knew Jesus was real. Yes. Right, man. He knew he was the son of God. Yes. There's some people get in church for a little bit and then they get out and say, well, I didn't never know if he was real or not. Judas had no doubt. In fact, it seems like at times that he could have been like a bosom friend of the Lord. For even at the Last Supper, John is sitting there with Christ. He's leaning up on his bosom. And whenever that they ask, Lord, who shall betray you? He is in such closeness uh, until the Lord is able to put a piece of bread uh, and sop it up and hand it over to him while John is still laying upon his breast. Uh, that tells you how close Judas was to Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, he wasn't trying to sit at the other end of the table. Uh, he's sitting up there within hand's reach. Uh, no doubt one even said it was possible. He was sitting to the left of Christ while John was sitting to the right of Christ. Uh, he was that close. No, he did not have to be lost. It was his choosing. For three years, he listened to the master's voice. He heard the preaching. He listened to Jesus expound the parables. He listened as Jesus broke it all down to them whenever the multitudes could not understand. And the Lord would give him an understanding of the word. He knew about the end times through the preaching and teachings of Jesus Christ. Just like so many people today, they know the word word of God but yet they still choose to be like Judas to ignore it and listen to what they want instead of what God desires for them right. but what was the big problem then the Bible tells us that in spite of all of these opportunities they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of, of silver what would he sell Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Listen to what Zechariah said. In Zechariah 11 and 12, he said, I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. And the Lord said unto me, cast it into the potter, a goodly price, and I was prized out of them. And I looked, and I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Jesus was betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a pauper, the price of a slave. And you say, oh, Brother Spratlin, how can Judas do that? My question is, how can people walk away from a loving Savior today? How can they walk away from a hand of kindness and compassion and take a mercies? How can they walk away from the giver of life whenever you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And yet people will still walk out and not want to serve God. It's beyond my understanding. And I want you to look at this though because there comes a time of remorse. There comes a time whenever you're going to realize I made a bad choice. I made a bad decision. Whenever you look at Judas in Matthew 27 and 4, he said, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. How many times, even now in eternity, has Judas wished I could go back and if I could go back to those crossroads, I would have looked at the Lord that night and said, no, Lord, you're giving that piece of bread to the wrong man. I tell you, I would never betray him. I'd never sell it for 30 pieces of silver. I'd never sell it for all the gold and all the silver in the world. If he can only turn the clock back. Right now, you and I, we have that opportunity that we can make the right choice and we can make the right decision and we can say, I'm going to be sold out all right, but I'm going to sell out and I'm going to start him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes, sir. Help us, Holy Ghost. Yes. Whenever people begin to live in, in this world and, and they begin to feel, um, you know, that they're part of it. And in fact, that's actually what that the prodigal son was wanting to do. He was wanting to feel like that he was part of it. And I don't have the time to cover all of this today. I know 
But I want you to understand that when we came to his senses, he realized that the world was not what he thought it was. That's right. That's it. And I'm going to tell you today, the world is not what the devil is painting it out to be. No, not at all. In fact, here he is, you know. He, he is, actually feeds his body at the expense of, of his very own soul. And it seems like that all the world is bowing before him. And those high priests are beating a path to his front door. They're slapping him on the back. And they're telling him, thank you so much. We've looked for someone just like you. But now in his time of grief and sorrow, there is no one to hold him and love him and tell him, son, you made the right decision. In fact, the very people that were trying to beat the path down to his door, they're looking back upon him and they're saying, what is that to us? He says, here's your money back. I betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? You're the one that did it. Can I tell you that whenever the devil is taking you for everything that you have, he's going to hang you out to dry and he's going to look at you and say what is that to me you're the one that chose it you knew it was a lie but you believed it anyhow my God somehow today get a hold to our hearts and realize so many people are selling Jesus out for far less than what Judas did yes that's right God help us today my Lord please help us no matter how repentant he was he could not get rid of it no, no matter what he would say he could not Get rid of it. In fact, Jeremiah kind of summed it up like this. He said, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. Right. Think about that. All your lovers have forgotten you. Whenever Cyrus the Great, um, who for a while thought that he was making a, a lot of big things out of the present world, yet he wrote his own epitaph. Now remember, this is a king. This is a king. And he said, this is what I leave behind. I am Cyrus. I occupied the Persian Empire. I was king over Asia, but grudge me not um, this monument. What is he saying? I could have had it all, but I don't feel like I'm honored. I don't feel like I'm, oh my God. How many people have died and left this world? And on this side of eternity, they enjoyed the applause of the people. But as they stood in the presence of an almighty just God, they're looking around and saying, I have accomplished nothing. I've done nothing with my life. This world, and years after, went back to Judas's grave. And, and, and they said that they literally plowed it up. But William Blaine, he wrote and described it in these scenes uh, and said uh, 30 pieces of silver burns on the traitor's brain uh, 30 pieces of silver oh it is hellish gain uh, I have seen him betrayed uh, the guiltless uh, he cried with fervent breath uh, as he threw down as he threw him down to the temple and rushed to a madman's death uh, I'm telling you that Judas will never forget uh, that kiss he placed upon the Savior's That's cheek right. uh, he'll never forget receiving the bloody pieces of silver he'll never forget taking it back uh, he'll never forget that night of betrayal uh, friend you hear me there's so many times God deals with people and I'm afraid that there's people in eternity this morning uh, and they are, they are in great mourning and they're, and they're great um, and they're greatly weeping and crying that there could be any tears they would shed the tears uh, but they remember time after time uh, whenever they rejected him they right. walked away from him yes. they denied him uh, they sold him out right. now they would they could turn the clock back yeah, and say God I'll serve you yes. with all of my heart right. Judas was a man that sold Christ out and we would say he sold him out for cheap. Right. Yes. Oh, cheap. In fact, this has been the story of all the ages. I want to tell you, no matter how much you sold him for, it's going to be cheap. Right. Yeah. But if you look back at Achan, they're going over into the promised land. He is known to be the troubler of Israel. How that he sold his soul for a piece of yellow gold. Right. Yeah. He sold his soul for just a few silver shekels. He sold his soul for some bright colors of a Babylonian garment. He sold his soul yes. to the cursed thing. Right. He said, oh, but Brother Spellin, it's nothing. It's nothing compared to what that he went through. How that him, his family, and all that he had was then put to death. And all we can think about 
how that Achan sold out, sold cheap. Then you look at Balaam. Balaam is the one who sold out for the promise of a house full of money. Think about it. Right. And I know you say, well, I remember reading the story and, and it seemed like he was a man of God. Yes, but he sold himself out. That's the reason why whenever war went up against uh, Balak, Balaam was also killed. Right. He sold his soul. Yes. And, and listen to this about Balaam. The Bible said this is what that uh, uh, the apostle Peter said. He said false teachers have forsaken the right way and have gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. So Jude wrote about him and said, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and, and, and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. And what about in 1 Kings 21 and 25? But there was none like unto Ahab. Yeah. Now think about it. Achan sold out for gold and silver in a Babylonian garment. And here Balaam is sold out. Why? He's wanting a house full of treasures that Balak has promised unto him. Can I remind you, though you know this, whenever you leave this world, you're not going to take an ounce of gold with you. You're not going to take the finest of garments with you. But you shall stand before God holy. And all things revealed. Oh, friend, you'll be totally unclothed. You're going to stand before him and God's going to look upon you and say, I see your heart. I don't see what you've accomplished in this world. I've seen your heart. And now whenever, whenever you take a look at Ahab, the Bible said that he did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Ahab sold himself to carry out the wicked deeds of somebody else. Right, that's it. Wanting the approval of his wife, he sold his soul. Amen. Yes, come on. It's not worth it. No, it's not. No. We used to sing that song that says if mama doesn't make it, I'm going to make it. If daddy doesn't make it, I'm going to make it. If my brother doesn't make it, I'm going to make it. If my sister doesn't make it, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, there are some people who said, I cannot serve God because my husband is mean and, and grumpy and unruly. And some are saying, I can't serve God because of my wife, uh, because she don't understand. I want to tell you this morning, I know a precious little lady whose husband left her several times because she would get up and go to church. And, and he would tell her, you come to church, I'm not going to be here whenever you get home. She'd get up and go home. But I will go to church. When she come home, he would not be there. But in the end, because of her faithfulness unto God, he was saved. Yes. What would have happened if she'd not been faithful unto God? She would have died and went to hell, and he could have died and went to hell right along with her. And I can tell you about a man today whose wife complained about it everything but he still went to the house of God and it was God that began to change her let me tell you friend you better hold on to Jesus it doesn't matter what your husband or your wife says Jesus is still your everything and it's going to be worth every torment it's going to be worth every power word it's going to be worth every slam and everything else just to hear him say well done enter into the joys of the Lord and guess what you're going to do you're going to be shouting up and down the hills of glory saying hallelujah I made and it's been worth every tear I've cried. It's been worth every trial I've had to walk through. When I get to see Jesus, it's going to be worth it all. Yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory. I know people today say, well, if I'd been in Judas's place, I would have done it different. If I'd been in, in Achan's place, I would have done it different. If I'd been in Balaam's place, if I'd been in Ahab's place, but the thing is, you're sitting in your place today, and what are you going to do different? Right. What are you right. going to do different? That's good. Come because on. Christ is still being sold out for the same thing that Judas sold him for, Achan sold him for, Balaam sold him for, Ahab sold him for. People are still saying the reason why they cannot serve God. Whenever you stand before God, He's not going to look for excuses. No. He's just going to ask you, like that Haggai did in chapter 1, verse 5, where he said, 
Consider your ways. That's right. Consider your way. Consider what you've done. Yes. You know, when you start to think about it, Judas received the 30 pieces of silver, but he never received anything from the silver. No. No. He never bought a cold drink. He never bought a pair of shoes. No. He never bought him a new suit of clothes. No. He received it. And yet he did not get anything from it. That's good. That's it. He said, Come on. That's the way that the world is, though, church. I, I, I mean, if, if we could see it, what he betrayed the Lord for did not bring him any satisfaction at all. No, it did not. But what it did bring him was remorse. Yes. How can I go spend this? This is blood money. Innocent blood at that. I'm not turning in a man that is guilty of murder. I'm, I'm not turning in a man that is a thief. This is the Son of God. I think about what that Solomon had to say in Ecclesiastes 12 and 8 where that he said, Vanity of vanities. Yes. All, All, is vanity. All is vanity. You know what he was saying? Emptiness of emptinesses. Yes. All is emptiness. Come on. Because without God you have nothing. That's right. If you're living today without God, you just have a just a hollow shell of a man. Because it's only God that can fill us up and give us what that we need right. on the inside. Whenever a man starts to face eternity without God, that man then begins to realize how big of a fool that he has been. Yes. While living in this crazy world, he realizes that the, the world gave that enchantment. That world pleaded with him. But there comes a time in every man's existence when all of the earthly things fail, the value comes to nothing. Right. If you could take all the money out of the Federal Reserve System and put it in your pocket, if you could go and gather up every bar of gold that has ever been made and placed into the hands of a man, whenever you stand before God, You'll not be able to use five cents. No. No. That's right. That's right. You won't be able to use any of it. You're going to be just like Judas. You had it all, but it profits you nothing. That's right. Many people have sold out to the devil, and today they have nothing to show for it but remorse, guilt, and a wrecked life. They sold out to the devil. Today their homes are broken. Yes. Dreams are shattered, and their life is most miserable. And they're all alone and they're all empty. And no matter if they're sitting amongst friends of 10,000, they're still feeling all alone. One philosopher made this statement, and I know that some of you have heard this over the years, and he said that every man has his price. He meant that by this, that there was a price that every man would sell his soul out for. And that may be true in most circumstances, but thank God it's not true in every circumstance. Right. I believe there's some people that are sitting in this church this morning who would say, I wouldn't sell him for the world. Right. I wouldn't sell him for the applause of men. I would not sell him for all the gold and all the silver. He's not for sale. Right. He is the love of my life. He is the keeper of my heart and my yes. soul. He is the giver of life. He's everything I need. And he's not for sale. So you can take your silver, your gold. Uh, you can take all of your amusement. You can take everything else and go on down the road. Uh, because it's just not for sale. Right. right. Not for sale. My dad left a collection of knives. And I have them up on my office wall. And I really don't know where. He accumulated those knives from. I know that after he passed away, Mom, she asked me, she said, would you like to have your dad's knives? I said, sure. I've had people walk into the office. They have admired those knives. They've asked a lot of questions about them. Can I get close enough to read? I want to see what the little label has to say. But I want to tell you today that those knives are not for sale. Right. Those knives were my dad's. Yeah. And they're not for sale. Yeah. I want you to understand that there is a gift that God has given unto me. 
And that was his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. He paid the fullest of all prices. And he is not for sale. No. He is not for sale. I'd rather have Jesus than anything else. Everything else is just going to fade away. I want you to listen to this point this morning. It said, it may not be for silver. It may not be for gold. But still by tens of thousands is this precious Savior sold. Yes. He's been sold for a godless friendship. Sold for a selfish aim. Sold for a fleeting trifle. Sold for an empty name. Sold for an awful bargain. None but God's eye can see. Ponder my soul the question. Shall he be sold by thee? Sold, and a weeping angel records a fatal choice. Sold, but the price of the Savior to a living coal shall turn. And with the pains of remorse forever deep in the soul to burn. It's not worth it. No, it's, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not worth it. You can say, but Brother Sprout, it, it, you know, I, I wouldn't be as wealthy as I am right now. If I really tried to serve God, let me tell you something about all your silver and all your gold. It doesn't belong to you. No, it doesn't. No. Uh, uh, no, wait, wait, preacher. It's under my name. I'm telling you, it does not belong to you. No. Haggai saw it, and this is what he wrote in Haggai 2 and 8. He said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah. <laughs> it all belongs to God. Yes, you, you might have some in your possession, but I'm going to tell you, he can take it any time that he wants to. And you're not going to take it whenever that you leave this world. I'm telling you, don't, don't, don't sell out your soul. Don't sell out your soul. Don't go to the bargaining table. Don't even allow it to become a question to you. It's just not worth it. If you descend into hell, your pomp and your glory will be left upon this earth. Listen to what that Solomon wrote and said, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Ezekiel said they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. You know what? It may not be eternity that you finally begin to realize your silver and your gold is not enough. If money was enough, I'm telling you that Bill Gates would never die because he has the money that he could buy life. Yes. But eternal life is not purchased with the money of mankind. It's been purchased through the blood that Jesus yes. shed on an old rugged cross. And I want to tell you that Jesus was even tempted by the devil himself. And he took him up and showed him all the world and said, I'll give you this if you'll just bow to me. But he said, no, Satan, it's not worth it. I'll honor my my father. I'll live with him in glory. And he will not sell out his father. Neither shall I sell out the father. I have too much to lose and nothing to gain if I sell out the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Come on. That's good. God help us today. Help us Lord. Say preach I'll never sell him for gold. I'll never sell him for silver. But Jesus Asked this question and said, For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's right. There, there's people today that's just sold their souls out for little, little ridiculous right. trinkets, yes. gains. No, no man has ever gained the world. You're not going to be able to get all the world. You, you can't. There, there's no way. But Jesus said, If a man could gain the world yet lose his own soul, he said, it's not going to be no prophet. No. Jesus was looking into the realms of eternity, wasn't he? What about Pilate? Though that he was convinced that Jesus Christ was a good man, he was convinced that Jesus Christ was a harmless man. But when we began to hear the cry of the crowd who said, if I'll let this man go, thou are not Caesar, Caesar's friend. Right. He gave it to the crowd that day. But can I tell you something about Caesar? <laughs> Caesar would have had no problem taking Pilate's life away from him. No. He wanted to be a friend. Yes. He was trying to be a friend to a man that no doubt he would never really be close to. And there's some people today that's trying to do the very same thing. 
They're still trying to hold on to something, hoping that it will be greater in the end if I could just hold on. So you know what he did? He sold out for a godless friend right. in exchange for a friend who said, I will never leave you. I will forsake you. That's right. And I'll be closer to you than a brother. Yes. I'll be like a father to you. I'll be like a mother to you. I will never abandon you, but I'll go with you always. But Pilate that day said, no, I'll sell out to a man that I want to be my friend. Right. I want to be my friend. Some of you may be saying, preacher, I won't fit in if I serve God. Friend, you're not going to fit in in hell, will you? No, sir. No. You're not? You're not going to fit in? No, but preacher, I'll, I'll lose some friends. No, they're not your friends. They're just your acquaintances. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you that you, you'll never find a friend right. like this man called Jesus Christ. Right. Never. I'll I, I begin to read this, and I, just, I often share things with Tina way before I ever bring them up here to you. And I, I just find it so amazing. <laughs> Alexander the Great, a man who was known to, to conquer the known world at that time, very, very <laughs> powerful, very rich. He had anything that a man could want, but I began to read to where that he actually died in his early 30s. And the cause of his death is it, a big fuss. Just to be honest with you, it's a big fuss. There are some say that he was poisoned. Some say that he died of malaria or some other disease. But nevertheless, this man died at a young age. And whenever he died, he had a coffin beaten out of gold that would be the shape and the form of his body. Okay? He's placed in that coffin. On his way to his burial, one of the captains of his army comes and steals his coffin. It's actually 30 days before that he ever comes to his burial place. Here's a man of power. Here's a man of authority. And I started reading that word that he told them. He said, on the way to my tomb, he said, I want you to sprinkle wealth and riches along the way. And they said, why? He said, I want people to understand that you cannot take it with you. You're going to leave it behind. Oh, my Lord. Listen to this. His tomb had been raided his body has been stolen. In fact, today they don't even know where he's at. <coughs> there was a queen who rose up and they said that she was in need of money and went and made a cheaper coffin and put his body in it and took the golden coffin so that way she would have money to spend. You can have everything Yes. And end up with nothing. Come on. Whenever you leave this world. That's right. That's right. If you could go back and ask Alexander the Great about it today, he would tell you, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. In fact, whenever that you really study it out, there were 63 Roman emperors who reigned, but only six of them went to the grave peacefully. Why? Anything besides God leads to sorrow. That's right. Yes. Leads to tragedy. Here's what, here's what Solomon said in Proverbs 10 and 7. He said that the name of the wicked shall lie. His name is going to be worth nothing. So if you've sold yourself for the selfish aims of this world, whenever that you leave this world, people are going to go. They may weep and cry and and boo-hoo over you for a short time. Life's going to go on. Right. They're going to forget us. Amen. Life is going to pass. But I'm going to tell you, if I can make it into the portals of glory, I'll never be forgotten. Right. Thinking of the words of Christ, he said, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. That's right. And I'd rather have Jesus more than anything Amen. I know today. Oh, yes. But for the musicians that they would become this morning, I want to ask you today, is it well with your soul? Do you have a perfect satisfaction in your life today about the future, about your eternity? Do you know 
that when all of the real estate that you own is gone, and all your friends have deserted you, a friend that you have a soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. That's right. And God's given you that opportunity to choose, to decide. There's some of you that say, I've been serving God, but you've not been serving God seriously. No, you've just been trying to fly free without commitment, without dedication. But I'm going to tell you, you don't want to miss heaven. No. You don't want to miss heaven. No, you don't. Anything that it takes to make heaven your home, friend, is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Has anybody ever heard of Vanderbilt College? Yes. If you like football, I'm sure that, that you've heard of Vanderbilt. <laughs> but the man, Vanderbilt, was one of the richest men that ever lived. In fact, where he did live, starting back in the 1700s, he was the richest man in America. Where he passed away, his son acquired all of his wealth. And he remained to be the, the wealthiest man in America. But this man who was the richest man in America, where he was dying, he called upon a minister to come and he looked at him and said, Sir, I'd like for you to sing a song. Mr. Vanderbilt, what would you like for me to sing? He said, I want you to sing the song that says, Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love, and power. If a man that had all this wealth realized he's about to leave this world, but my son's going to get it, I'm not going to take any of it with me. So I want everyone to know that whenever I'm about to leave this world, I want to make one more statement, one more message. Come, you sinners. You may be poor, you may be needy, you may be weak and wounded, you may be sick and sore. But Jesus stands there ready to save you. And I want to tell you today, friend, if there's one of you here today that you're lost, Jesus stands there ready to save you. Brother Spellin, I don't have anything to give him. He doesn't want your silver. He doesn't want your gold. He doesn't want your possession. All he wants is you. That's all. That's all that you're going to be able to take into eternity. You're not going to be able to take your, your vehicle. No, no, no. You're not going to be able to take anything like that with you. You're just taking yourself. Uh, that's all that you have. But whenever it has been covered by the blood of Jesus that washes away all of our sins, uh, and whenever you stand before him and he begins to see the blood, uh, he's going to look at you and say, Come on in. Enter uh, in. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Uh, come on to a place to where that you can walk upon the streets of purest gold. Uh, come to a city to where the sun never stops. Stop shining because the glory of God is so bright there. I want you to know Jesus wants you in heaven. Yes. He wants all of us there. Yes. Will you please stand with me today? You may seek one more pleasure, you say, and surely this will satisfy my soul. But I, the Lord thy God, will speak unto you this day and say, there is nothing that will ever satisfy you outside of my love. Look at your life and what you have sought for. Has it satisfied? Are you full? Do you still find yourself empty? Do you still find yourself wanting? For the thing that your soul cries out for today is not the things of this world. It is that which is out of this world. It's my grace. It's my mercy, saith the Lord. That's what your soul cries out for. You long for things and, and you know not what of. This day I speak to you and tell you that the love of your life is what you have longed for. And I am the love of your life. There is nothing that can ever take the place of my love. There is nothing that can ever be as full as my love. I am the love of your life, saith the Lord. And if you will come to me, then ye shall be complete and ye shall be satisfied, saith the Lord God. <laughs>
Measure it all. Fill your cup to the top. Let all your pots run over, saith the Lord. Whenever you stand before me, you will stand as a poor man. You will stand before me with nothing. You will look and say, but Lord, I was this and I was that. And I will look back upon you and say, but you was lost. You refused the hand of love and a, and a Savior. Come to me this day, saith the Lord. Know that my love is fulfilling. Know that I challenge you. I challenge your heart. For I have no desire to see you perish, saith the Lord. You know, whenever I come to church and I look across the congregation, <coughs> really, I just assume everybody that comes to church anymore is just saved and ready to meet God. But I'm not the one that goes home with you. I don't know what your treasures are. And to be quite honest with you, I started working on this message to preach this last Wednesday night. But it's like the Spirit of the Lord stopped me and said, No, this is for Sunday morning. And since that time, I felt like that God's just been dealing with me. So many people are selling out. But whenever you stand before God, all that you sold out for, you're going to look back and say, Oh, it profit me nothing. I find no benefit. I find no gain for myself. All that I sold Christ for. Jesus loves you today. Jesus loves you so much. Will you stand with me, please? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I, I want you to picture something with me. This is what I've kind of seen in my mind this morning. A king standing in all of his royal apparel. And he looks out amongst all of the gathering. And he sees a man that has not owned a royal garment. He calls him to the front. The man will look at him and say, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have a wedding garment. But this king wants you at his at this wedding so bad until he says, this is what I will do. I will fit you. And I will clothe you. And I'll give you a wedding garment so that you do not miss the wedding. That's what's happened to every one of us that are saved today. We came into his presence. We were not clothed with righteousness, but His mercy and grace reached out to us and He clothed us with His love and grace. He clothed us with His righteousness. And He says, now you're my son, now you're my daughter. And Jesus is wanting to add to that family today. He's wanting you. He's wanting you. He's wanting you. Father, I preach this morning what you laid up on my heart to preach. And I just believe that, God, there's people here this morning that's been afraid to give you everything because, God, they're trying to hold on to things that they find as their security. But Spirit of God, you're trying to tell them today those things are not security at all. They shall also pass away. Lord, I'm asking you to draw them unto you. Draw them unto you today, Lord. Draw them unto you, I pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'd like to invite every one of you, if you would, just to come and pray. You're here today, and you're saying, I want to go pray, but I don't want to go by myself. Why don't you take the hand of that person next to you and say, I want to go pray. Will you go with me? They'll go with you. Won't you just come find your place to pray this morning? I, I just want you to sell out to God. 
I just want you to tell God how much He means to you. God, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look to the silver, the gold, the things of this world, but Jesus, you're my everything. Can you do that this morning? For those of you who are willing to say, Lord, I'm coming to you, you're my everything. Come on, church. Let's find us a place to pray today. You're my everything, Lord. I don't want to be like the rest of the world. I'm so proud. Lord, I want your love.
use of you, God. That should be every one of our prayer. Amen. Lord, use me, but prepare me to be used of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Appreciate you so much being with us today. And I want you to leave this place. I want you to think about this as you go today. If you could write your own eulogy, if you could pin the things that you would like to be up on your own stone, your headstone, what would it be? And then I would ask, does your life match what your eulogy would be? Yes. Would it match what is written upon your your tombstone? Right. I've often told people life is what's uncertain, death is certain. Yes. You have an appointment that you're going to keep with right. God. Right. So please be ready. There's no second chances. So pointing out a man wants to die and after this the judgment. Be ready to stand before him. Why people go of all ages. Be ready. Amen. Be ready. You stand with us this morning. Appreciate you so much being here with us in the house of God. Our prayers are that God will keep you, touch you, bless you. Pray for our young people as we go to camp this week. I want God to really do something to their heart. So I was just going and having fun. They have a, a Bible service in the morning. They're going to have an evening service. And uh, let's just pray that God would just touch them in a very special way. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Ed if he would pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your outline.